what we're you're showing you right here is a process of devil club. We get it in the springtime. It's better if you get it by a stream or a waterfall because they give the bark better when it's uh, close to water. You can scrape them right here too. And it's better if they're fat because you work just as hard on a skinny one as you do a fat one. And they always seem to grow where the best berries are. You can't cut them long? They are long. Cut them right at the base. I want it for their walking stick. If you cut them short, you can't use them for a walking stick. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Too skinny for a walking stick? That's a good one. And you see how big these are? This is the size that I like to use because you would do just as much work on a small one as you do a big one. So it's better if you use a, find the biggest, fattest ones you can, and, you, and then you get more bark off of it. Are they all clean? No knobs on them? It's uh, easier to scrape because when you hit, you don't you have hit, to scrape around the knobs. You can't get past it, but I don't think I can get the whole thing off of it. Anyway. If you uh, you didn't have gloves, all you do is look for the devil club you want, and scrape off the needles on the bottom, and clip it off. Then you can hold it with your hand. Oh, yeah. It's better if you do it in a in a spring because the green comes off easier. It peels like a banana, but later on you have to use a a potato peeler. The needles come off pretty easy, and then uh, looks like peanut skin that's coming off with it. We don't we don't use that for anything. It's right down to the green. You don't want to scrape the green off. That's what we want. I had to learn this one on my own. My mom was gone by then. Just by word of mouth. The green is what we're going to take off. And it'll be just a white stick. See the peanut skin I like? After they're dry, they make good drumsticks. So leather on it. You can also cut them up and use them for necklaces, beads. You have to cut them in little pieces. And here's one that's been scraped. After this sits around in the house for a while, it'll dry. And then we cut them up. Here's the bead that's cut up. And it needs to have a hole put in it. The middle is really soft. You can use a nail and stick it through and make holes. To sand one takes about 15 or 20 minutes to get all the roughness off. This takes a lot of work. These are made on elastic, so they fit over anyone's head. Some are made with string. This one's made with string, but you see the red beads and any kind of beads you like you can put on there and they dry so if you put oil on them you can smell it and it also keeps them from drying up this one's almost done one time we went to when we were in Haines we were picking uh, high bush cranberries and right where there was a lot of cranberries devil clubs were there I was trying to get to it and the dev big devil club was on the way, and I stepped on it with my, with my boots, with one foot, 
Then I went to step on it with my other foot. I lost my footing and fell right on the devil club. Oh, no. oh. right on my behind. <laughs> devil clubs were there. <laughs> After that, I start wearing Carhartts. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, peels right off. Oh, the sunshine. I thought, how am I going to get it off? I said, I'm just going to bite it off. <laughs> I don't have any fingernails, so my teeth work. Look at that one. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> if I put my lip on it, my lips kind of burn, but I try not to put my lip on it. The skinny ones, uh, they're harder to peel, and you work just as hard on a skinny one as you do a big one. I may as well get a big one and not work so hard on so many. Because that's almost big enough for a quart already. What you have here is a uh, peeled uh, devil club. You can see how big the devil club was by how big the bark is. So we're saving the bark. I usually stuff it, but because they're so big, I think I'll cut it up. And a friend told me how to do this part. Before when I, I did it, when I found out I had cancer, we just got the devil club and I put it in a gallon jar and put the bark in there, kept it in the refrigerator and drank it every day. They gave up coffee. We gave up beef. Ray went along with me. He did the same thing. I think it was by the grace of God. I didn't need any chemo or radiation. I had breast cancer three months after we were married. And you didn't do any other treatments? No. Just drank Devil Club. I would not recommend it to anybody who had cancer, though. <clears throat> They're willing to try it, but they'll give up the doctor's orders. I didn't have the time to go to Seattle for six weeks by myself. Ray had time off, but his time expired, so I just chose to stay home. And is the cancer gone now? Yeah. That was 1985. Three months after I got married. Hmm. Eleven months later, I had uh, cancer in the other side. And that one was removed. But then it could have been caught early enough where I didn't need to go through the harsh treatment. And then after I get enough in here, I'll put olive oil in there. My slow cooker is right there, ready for, for the, uh, the next step here. Oil is going to be strong in here because we've got lots of Devil Club. 
and I'm cutting it instead of stuffing it. So you usually put it in long strands and just jam it? Yeah, in. usually just go like that and stuff it in. But I think it has, gives off more medicine when it's cut up. So I might let you cut them up. I'm going to do the next step. Take all the bark, put it in a jar, and add olive oil. Up to here. I might run out of oil. Is it up there? Not yet. Put it in here, close it tight, <clears throat> and here's a slow cooker, and it's hot. It'll go in there overnight. We want it warm. So just right in the middle there? Yeah. Okay. Turn it over till it clicks right there. Okay. And the water we want about there. And then we have uh, already processed Devil Club oil. This is fresh bark in olive oil that's been put in a slow cooker for two hours, I mean all night. And then when you want to do something with it, bring it out. And what we're going to do right now is strain it so we could have only the oil. The bark has lots of oil in it. So we're probably just going to leave it like this and let it drain all out. To get the, the medicine out of the bark and it goes into the oil. Makes you feel good and it heals your, your wounds and just all around good medicine. I put it on my face, <laughs> my hands, I don't want to waste it. Ah, smells so good. We can start on another one. This one takes the longest, is to get the oil from the bark. Okay, we're going to have a snack and come back and try to get the rest of the oil out of there. It's so hard you can't even squeeze it out. You need cheesecloth to, to wring it out of. We're going to put this in the, the cheesecloth to wring out the oil. We're going to get all the oil out of the bark as we can, as much as we can. So it's in cheesecloth, and then we're going to try to squeeze it. We just drain it and warm it up in a pot. I put in vitamin E. You can add many ingredients to it. Some people put in uh, little green spruce tips, and some people put comfrey in there too. This is lavender oil. It really smells good. And then this one is, I guess, calming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is my number. I was number nine born, so I like a number nine. Okay, we want to put some of this in here. And uh, tea tree oil. You could also save some of the oil and put it into a container like this for a massage. How do you like my little funnel? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And I save all kinds of little jars for oil. And I take it to my masseuse and then she rubs my whole body with Devil Club oil.
I'll let that settle down. And this is beeswax for salve. Just so it melts. Do you have to be careful that it doesn't boil? Yeah, we don't want to get catch fire. After we strain it, we put it in a pot and add beeswax. You never know how much to add, because sometimes you come out with a real stiff ointment. This was made earlier, and it's too stiff, too hard. You can still use it, but it takes longer to put in your hand. And what we're doing is melting it down so we could add it to what we're going to be making now. This is what we melted down, and it's too stiff. So we're going to add it to the, add it to the Devil Club oil. What we usually do is put a little on a spoon and put it in the freezer. Oh, to see if it's thick enough? Mm-hmm. They just took it out like this and put it over here to cool it. And here it is. That's what it's going to feel like when it's done. It's ready. Is that the consistency you like? Yeah. Your container to use, it's up to you. Like this is a good purse size. Sometimes it come out with a real stiff ointment, and sometimes it's soft. And this one is, this one is nice and soft, really soft. When I went to Klaquan, we had to cut about 20 fish, and my, my forearm was hurting, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, it hurts. I sat and I was rubbing it, rubbing it, and I said, I didn't bring any kind of a store-bought, like Icy Hot, or, and I thought, wait a minute, I have Devil Club oil salve. So I dug it out and rubbed my arm, and it was amazing. The pain was gone. This is the bark from uh, the Devil Club. And I've had it in a gallon bag, and it's really dry. So what I want to do is uh, break it up so it can fit into my grinder. Or you could put it in water in a glass jar and let it sit for maybe five days and then drink the, the water from, from this bark. This is what I use to grind my... Uh, Devil Club is an old-fashioned coffee grinder. There it all went in. It has to be ground up to a fine powder because you'd want to have no sticks in your mouth. You can hear there are still like sticks in there.
and it's fine powder, really nice. What I like to do is make the powder and put it under your tongue. If you put it under your tongue, it goes right to your bloodstream. What's also done is uh, to take a piece of it, cut it off, and you put it above your door to keep the bad spirits out. There's a story a pastor told me. And this man, he kept saying, I sure don't feel well. I don't feel good. Somebody must have come in with a, a bad, bad feelings. And maybe uh, wished him, wished him uh, illnesses. And uh, <laughs> someone told him, I said, uh, why don't you put devil club over your door? So he did. And the man that used to come see him all the time stopped coming. He didn't come to the house no more because the devil club was over the door. Wow. It's powerful.